Hello lovely, I'm here with a channeled message from your Divine Masculine. Let's find out what's going on with them today. The energy may be a little tough. Something is up. Okay. Nine of Cups, Seven of Swords. Feeling like an imposter in their own dream. Whoa. They keep trying to make it work. They keep doing everything they can, but it's just, it's just creating more and more of the same stuff. It's, and it's, they don't feel like they can really be who they're supposed to be, which is strange because in their mind, this is my dream, right? So that's, that's a weird thing to say. And ta that together is 16. So we're seeing some chaos in their world when it was supposed to be that forward momentum, that it's tower instead of chariot. What else do we need to know? Nine of pentacles. This is not just about their dream in terms of like, oh, I want to be happy. I want to feel lucky. I want to be able to transform and have all these good things happen to me. I think this is saying it's more than that. It's about me being able to turn that around and do something with it. And so it's like we've got these roots and everything growing out of the cups, almost like this is like a little planter. And we see the, the sun and we see the butterflies. And then we come over here and it's a little bit more compact underground. There seems to be more of an abundant. This is more showy. This is more... I can't explain what what is the word I'm I'm seeing or hearing it, but I can't hear it. But there's something about this that just feels like denser energy, if that makes any sense. And it's really powerful. It's really strong. I I I know that there is a terrible glare, but I cannot see the back of my camera, and I don't know how to not show you the glare. Gracious. This is the only hard part about doing these readings on the Divine Masculine's time. I normally wouldn't do a reading at this time, ever. But here they come again, knock, 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 okay. So it's not just that I'm not enjoying myself. Like this is my thing, I'm not enjoying myself. But on top of it, I'm not producing. This is kind of a, a an extended version of the seven of pentacles a little bit almost like saying even when i saw it wasn't working out i still stuck around and it's still not doing what i wanted to do okay so there's this like imposter syndrome or maybe everybody else is imposters who's wearing the mask here there's this feeling like the dream is all a facade and it could just be toppled over there's this feeling like I cannot explain. I said dense, but I'm talking about like powerful energy, abundant vibes. Like I can't explain what I'm seeing, but it's, it's almost like what we would think of when we see a pyramid and when we know and understand like the sacred meaning and behind it. I'm, oh, it's so deep. It's so strong guys. Okay. One more. And now the wheel of fortune. And to me, this says, hey, DF, I've been trying every which way to make this stuff happen. But for some reason, I feel like I'm in the worst possible position. Mm, okay, okay. This is a strange message. It's not often that we get the Divine Masculine acknowledging like where they have made a mistake about this in particular, about like their purpose and the path that they've taken. And, I'm, and here's the thing. It's one thing for them to be like, yeah, you know, I don't have anybody I can trust around me. Like, okay, that stuff I get. We hear that a lot, actually, where they look around and they go, what is wrong with me? Like, why would I pick these people? But this is like... The plan itself, what they decided to plant, how they decided to build, like all of it. You know what, you know what I'm hearing right now? 
And maybe somebody asked them this. Maybe that's why they're, this is what this feels like. It feels like somebody walked up to your divine masculine and was like, how's life? And they were like, not too good. And they were like, why? Like, well, I don't know. I keep trying to, you know, work it out. And then the person just was like, well, how's that working out for you? And it was like knife in the heart devastation. Like, wait a minute. How has this been working out for me? Not well. Why isn't anything working? This is my plan. What's wrong? And it's like, boom, boom, boom. So, okay, they're having revelations about this. What are we missing? They feel like really, really bad about this, guys. They feel stuck, hung up, strung up. I don't want to say strung out, but I know that there are some that might actually feel like that. It's awful how they're feeling. They know something's wrong. They can see that they don't belong. But this time, this is so deep, y'all. This is crazy. It is not just about the circumstances and the situation. They see the steps that got them into this mess. This, you know what this says? Guilty as charged. I'm guilty. I know I did it. That was my choice. That's how I got hung up like this. But they never admit that. Not that part. What are we missing? What are we not getting? Seven of Cups. And this is the planets, right? Seven of Cups. With the planetary alignment. What we don't understand is that this was exactly what was supposed to happen. It was the only way for them to be able to figure it out. And that there is some, there's something on the other side of this. There's something on the other side. What does that mean? No. <laughs> like, like literally? Like, no. Hmm. Can someone tell me what these are? And what's that? What's that right there? This is standing out to me, but I don't know why. All right, I'm going to keep going. So to me, this says this is divine, bringing divine masculine's attention to the problem. What's the problem, divine masculine? Yeah, what's your solution to that? How's that solution been working for you? Why do you keep doing the same freaking thing over and over again? And it's because they're not really providing a solution. They're just winging it. They're just trying to figure it out in the moment, but they don't really know what they're doing. Which, which is weird though, because if this is your whole plan, if this is your dream, if this is what you, you really want to do so bad, why is it so hard for you to figure it out? We're not talking like I'm being impatient. I'm, I'm for real with you. I'm like, what's going on here? This has been years now. We've had this plan for a decade. Like, you know what I, so, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get some cards on the table. Whoa. Well, there's a lot of cards. All right. Well, there's only three. I'll take them. All right, Divine Masculine, I will deliver your message. I think I understand where you're at, but what is the point? Six of Pentacles. Divine Masculine realizes that their gifts are being wasted where they are. That is the major thing that you need to understand. And I think that's because many of us as Divine Feminines, we know that and it really upsets us. That they're not appreciated, that they're not loved for who they are, but on the other side of it, that they're okay with wasting energy on people who are just going to siphon everything they've got just to take it, just to say they got it. It's like, we don't want to see them going through that. So for them to acknowledge that the reason why, like the, if they get to the bottom of it, the reason why their plans haven't really worked is because they weren't really working within their gifting. Maybe what they wanted to do, like the goal that they had could have been achieved if they had tapped in. So the goal wasn't a problem, but the way they went about it was. Very low vibrational, just not right. 
okay, so they're coming to terms with this, coming into awareness of their gifts, but don't we understand them? Six of Wands. That well, is what this means to them. Okay, so let's get the message here. All right, Divine Masculine. Six and six. Okay. So that's pointing back to the hanged man energy. It's almost like they're hanging in that like cocoon thing. And they're sending a message to you. Like they're telepathically sending you something. So what's the message? I wish I could explain it to you. That in my life, darkness has always been brighter than the light. The people in my life that are people who I have always known I shouldn't trust, they were wickedly smart. <laughs> and I admired them so much. I thought they were really brilliant and powerful and confident. And I wanted to be like them. And for sure, they did not look at love and, and relationships as anything good. And a lot of them actually used relationships as, as a business transaction or just to get what they wanted. And I don't know how I got here, but I started to become one of these people. And by the time you came along, it's like you just weren't speaking my language. But that's crazy, right? Because out of anyone in this world, you understand my passion. You understand the good side of me. You see the potential in me that honestly, even I know is there. Just no one else has ever noticed. And sometimes I can't tell if you're just trying to like con me like everybody else. I mean, I've been surrounded by fake people for so long. I just thought everybody was. And I thought you were faking being real, you know, pretending to be real. And I just, I couldn't find it in me to trust you. And I felt connected to you and I, I trusted you in a weird way, but not, not with what you were saying. And somehow I ended up going down a path where I looked at you just like every other good thing in my life. Like it would just be a waste. It would be a waste of time and energy. And it's just was way more responsibility than I was looking for. And I just pushed you away. Even though deep down you spoke to my soul in a way that no one else has ever done. And I, I think that really scared me, but I also think that I didn't know what to do with it because I was already on my path. And then, then I really got pissed because then I couldn't stop thinking about you and you were just not supposed to come in and interrupt what I was trying to do. And you ruined it, okay? You ruined it because then... All I could see with everything around me was how dumb it was. It was like you, you took something that I had deemed so fun and innocent and you made it annoy me. It's crazy because when I look back now, I don't understand how I ever even had that perspective, but... I get it. I remember it. I remember. And it bothered me even more that you would come in and, and, and bring my attention 
to how wrong everything was, but also have the nerve to just have me in such a, a, a weird place. Like I, I felt this sense of camaraderie with you because I was denying who you were. And so I thought that we were on the same page in the fact that we were both just kind of, you know, doing what we had to do that we weren't, we weren't being real. And I, so I thinking that's who you were, it was, it was really messed up to me when you were like, again, appearing to pretend to, to just be so happy and, and joyful, especially about me. And, and it just felt like a ploy. It felt like, it felt like a trick or a trap. And it wasn't fair. You come in and all I can see is the bad in my life. But you make me want to feel the good in it, 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 it. You just, you confused me. To no end. But you didn't confuse the real me. The real me sat back in the shadows, just waiting. Waiting for the day that I decided to stop acting like I was stupid. To stop pretending that I didn't know what was happening. To stop playing innocent when I knew I was being a venomous snake. The real me sat there. Rarely ever spoke unless it was especially egregious. And one day... I decided to stop covering my eyes to see my life for what it was. And I realized I'd been hanging upside down. And I don't know how long I've been here. I don't even know when I got caught. But now all I can think about is you. How foolish I was to not take the offer when I had the chance. And it pains me now because all I really wanted deep, deep down was just the twinkle of love a glimmer of hope that maybe there will be days where I were happy nights where I could be held big spoon, little spoon, it doesn't matter or I would trust the person laying by my side and trust myself to be good to them. Deep down, I've always known but you came into my life after I'd already become this person. And I just don't even know how to make sense of the dreams in my head. Because it's never the right person, the real me, in the right place at the right time. Sometimes I'm, I dream I'm the real me, but I'm in the real world where my false self likes to run things and the real me is just pissed off at all the chaos I've left. Some days I'm my false self and I'm in a dream and the world is beautiful and we're together and it's like everything you say to me triggers me but the moment I snap, the moment I say anything to you that hurts you. At first I'm devastated and then I'm furious. 
And I wake up and I just feel awful. I just, I just wish that those points where I have the motivation to be a good person could actually align with those points where there's an opportunity for me to be a good person. And right now, it just doesn't feel that way. It feels the opposite. It feels like it doesn't matter what I do. That even if I tried to give in to my real self, it wouldn't change anything. It feels like you were my karma. You were the one that got away. And all I can do is just hang here. I can't fix it. I can't do anything. Because I'm so mixed up and jumbled up. And I wouldn't even know where to start fixing me. There is so much in this world that has hurt me and made me this person and I just don't know how to trust I don't know how to try <laughs> because everything I've ever done seems to mess up is that really trying if I screw up every time I'm worried that if I come to you now, my false self and your purest form are not going to mesh well. And I don't know how to bring my true self to the forefront. I don't know how to push this part of me that just always has, says the wrong thing and does the wrong thing and and hurts people. I don't know how to stop this part of me from existing. I just want to snap my fingers and make it go away. I have found myself becoming more and more burdened by the very plans and ideas that I set in motion and I don't know how to fix it. I don't want to be a burden to you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want my goals and dreams and plans to interrupt your life. But I don't want to live without you either, okay? And I'm spinning my wheels here. I don't know what to do. Everything's changing. Everything's falling apart. But it's like I can't seem to just let it go. And I think it's because I'm so afraid of the darkness taking over again. This has been a dark path the whole time. I chose evil. I chose bad. Not understanding that I would get bad back. And what I've done in my life with this kind of lifestyle, this, this paradigm, this, this, these beliefs, I can't do that to you. Not again. Not even a little bit. So, something's got to change in me. Something's got to give. I can't get us back that, that fresh start, that new beginning, that opportunity that we had. I can't erase what's happened. I cannot erase the darkness. But if you're willing, maybe we can fight it together. Maybe we can join forces against the evils of this world and help people 
who are confused and afraid to figure out what comes next. Because I know it's so easy for you to see the light in your world, but for me, there's a lot of false light. There's a lot of tricksters. I think with your knowledge of the truth and my experience with absolute foolishness, maybe we can at least save a few people from making the same mistakes. Maybe we can save a few people who really love each other. And we can stop them from living a life apart, a life of regrets. Because this was never my plan. I never intended to be hanging here, hoping, wishing, and praying that this message got through to you, knowing that if it didn't, I deserved it. I never planned to fail. But there's no way I can keep this idea of success in my head anymore. Because it's never worked for me. And I realize now that the path that I started a long time ago, the beliefs that I held, the way that I thought about things, the way I pushed love out of my heart, that all started and stemmed from darkness. And it was so deeply ingrained in me that by the time you came along, I missed the best opportunity. I missed the best person. I missed the best lover, the best chance I had at happiness because I chose darkness and I'm so sorry I didn't choose it to run from you I had chose it long before I, I showed you a false light because that's what I had been trained to do I wasn't trying to hurt you you were just a passerby honestly I wish it hadn't been you I wish that we could just meet tomorrow for the first time and fall in love at first sight and kiss and hug and run to the nearest church or wherever or Vegas and get married. And if you want babies, I'll have babies. And if you don't want babies, we don't have to have babies. Whatever you want to do. I just wish, I just wish... wish this wasn't us right now and I just wish that this wasn't our foundation but more than anything I wish we were together and if that means that we've got to make it make sense then I am willing if you're willing just as soon as I can get down from here Ooh, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Just so you know, there is a love letter for... So th I, this is before the 1111 portal. And there's going to be a love letter for after the 1111 portal because this 1111 um, portal exclusive package that I've been working on right now is actually talking about what happens for the DM and, and like what it means for us as divine feminines after. Normally I do readings like for what the portal is, but no, this is this is all about how what the 1111 portal triggers. This is one of the most powerful 1111 portals that we've had since I started doing this ministry other than the 1111 2020. This is like a culminating moment. So I'm just letting you know right now if this one hit, that is available, but it's a completely opposite energy to this, which is, I, I was not expecting this when I came in. And so, okay. 
I'm just letting you know, I don't know what's going on, but if you're interested, um, you can get the exclusive package from thefieryGrace.com. It's the 1111 portal package. And again, it's really about the other side of the portal, right? You, you know, if you walk, if you walk through a portal from here and you're like, meow, 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 right, we're going to be talking about over here in the unknown. So, um, the reason I got a little emotional here is because I'm pretty sure that this, this has been the energy for the DMs leading up to that portal. And then after the portal, they're going to get the clarity about this. So I'm actually trying not to get emotional again because it's like, I feel really bad for them sometimes. Oh man. All right. So yeah, I'm like, kind of like hoping that your DM is, is in both of those readings in this one and that one, you know, um, if you're, duh, if you're interested in working with me, I do all kinds of stuff, phone calls. I guess I can tell you right here. We do have long-term coaching again, both myself and Mr. Lightwork now offer it. Um, there is going to be a limited number of coaching, um, programs available every month. So just make sure that, you know, if you were interested in it, that you don't wait thinking you can kind of just join at any time. If there is a point where you're like, no, I'm really going to need the coach to help me with this, um, depending on what you're wanting to do, whether it's like relationship coaching or personal coaching, um, you just want to make sure that you get yourself set up and book your, or not book your spot, but um, it's not a spot, it's multiple spots, it's multiple calls, but I think you understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get through this and I'm not doing a good job, obviously. Um I also do phone sessions, and if you're interested in a YouTube reading, you can do it live or you can get it recorded. And then I also have a bunch of intuitive tools. So if you would like to learn more about the reunion journey, like what the actual timeline from separation to reunion looks like, um, if you'd like to learn about where your DM is, you know, on the scale of are they even a DM to all the way fully divine? Where are they? I have a reunion journey toolkit available. <clears throat> and I think that's really important for this season because a lot of divine masculines are their energies are shifting. So this is also a reminder if you have a toolkit already, this is a time to redo your assessments. Okay, this is a very good season for it. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you so much to everybody who has been supporting us lately and, and realizing that when you like a video, when you comment, when you share, when you subscribe, when you do any of that stuff, it really does support our channels. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm, I need to stop talking because obviously it's, my voice sounds terrible. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so if you are wanting to leave a comment signature at the end of this video, you can do that. And also if you are willing to leave a cup Okay, your cup and maybe with a heart with it. So some sort of cup, like a, like any kind of cup, and then a heart. Oh, yeah, I have it. <laughs> leave this in the comments, okay, guys? Um, if not, you can leave any kind of vessel and any kind of heart in the comments below in addition to your comment signature. Remember, guys, whenever I ask you to leave a comment, if you can try to leave them in separate comments instead of jamming them all together, it makes it hard for me to see what what is what. Some people, um, the other day I asked you to leave a rainbow. Some of you put a rainbow next to your comment signature and I have kind of like a photographic memory, but if you add an image in the front of it so I can remember your comment signature until you put a different one in front of it and now all of a sudden it just looks like emojis to me. So remember, your comment signature should be its own thing. If I ask you to do something at the end of the reading, it should be its own thing because sometimes I do giveaways with those. And if I ask you a question, again, it'd be good to put that in its own comment because if you've left a long comment and then answered something, I might not be able to read your whole novel that you wrote me and read what you said in the answer to my question. So if you could do that for me, that'd be very helpful. And it's also, I think, good for the channel. But again, it's easier for me to be able to differentiate. Okay, I'm gonna go blow my nose. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Peace.